The GDP of New Zealand in 2020 was $212 billion. The global drug delivery market in 2020 was $1,430 billion, roughly seven times the GDP of New Zealand. It's forecasted by 2025, this would be roughly 10 times the GDP of New Zealand. So should New Zealand be missing out? Certainly not. In order to introduce this project, it is important to understand what is drug delivery. Drug delivery is a developed engineering technology for use on humans and animals, for targeted delivery of drugs, for the purpose of therapy, to extend lives and improve health. Types of drug delivery, conventional and controlled. In conventional delivery, there's an initial spike with a declining release. This could be toxic or unsafe for patients. In controlled drug release, there's a gradual increase with a constant release. This is safer and not toxic for patients. What is the need for this project? DEC International, who I work for, is an innovative manufacturing and technology group based in Hamilton, New Zealand. This project will help grow DEC's research and development program by increasing drug delivery capability and knowledge base around encapsulation. Learnings from this project will then be used for future research and development work. The aim, to develop a novel process to encapsulate an amphiphilic drug within a natural polymer. A novel process is one that innovates using current processes and available resources. To encapsulate means to coat small particles, liquid or solid, to improve drug release kinetics. An amphiphilic drug is one that has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts. And a natural polymer is one that is sourced from nature. As part of the aim, an important objective is the ability to control particle size. The reason for this, particle size influences the surface area to volume ratio, which influences the absorption and drug release rate. In order to realize the aim of this project, five research questions were developed. Number one, can a novel process be designed using available resources? Which process parameters affect particle size and size distribution? Is emulsion an appropriate technique to encapsulate drugs? Does dripping of emulsion dictate the final size of particles? And lastly, what future work can improve the design process and results? The developed methodology begins with the raw materials, oleic acid and sodium alginate. Oleic acid is added to ibuprofen, the drug, and sodium alginate is stirred. The mixture of oleic acid and ibuprofen is sonicated, which is then added to the stirred sodium alginate. This is then homogenized, creating the first emulsion. This emulsion is added to excess of oleic acid, which is then homogenized again to create the double emulsion. This is followed by a sonication step which is then dripped into stirred calcium chloride solution to form beads. The beads are then filtered and dried. From the trials, upon visual inspection, it could be seen that no emulsion creates particles down to two millimeters, which are transparent. The single emulsion creates particles down to 0 0.5 millimeters, which are white in appearance. And the double emulsion creates particles down to 40 microns, which are not visible by eye and require optical microscopy and the master sizer for characterization. Particle size and shape. Optical microscopy was used. The images indicate the size and shape of the particles. Measured particles were less than 70 micron. A roundness factor was calculated, which tells us that particles were generally spherical, some were oblate. Particle size distribution. A master sizer was used. The graph above indicates the distribution of particle sizes across six formulations. 10% of the particles were less than 40 micron, 50% were less than 89 micron, and 90% were less than 236 micron. Just for scale, 
one millimeter, which is a thousand microns, looks like this. Conclusions and future work. Conclusions. This process using a double emulsion technique is capable of creating particles down to 40 microns. There are indications that stirring of calcium chloride and homogenization speed create smaller particles. Further work is required to substantiate this. Commercial applications using this process to create particles include sprays, creams, ingestibles, and injectables. Future work could include DEC International performing studies to reliably detect drug presence, understanding the drug release kinetics, and further optimizing the process to make it scalable and cost effective. This project would not have been possible without the help of everyone mentioned here. Finally, summarizing the project, this is the created poster. Thank you.